everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we are working on the privacy screening going on in the garage. I will tell you, this has not been an easy thing to do. So I needed a low cost, easy way to add privacy to the garage. So you've already seen the video at this point of me doing the frosted glass spray on the windows. I didn't want to do that with this rear window or this side window. And custom cut blinds are hard to do. Hard to do money-wise. I really have a hard time parting with that when I'm just leaving this house. So the idea is to do this on the cheap, do it frugally, and these are 44 inch windows. And you know what? I went to all kinds of places trying to find the right size blind. My number one store, my stop for any home improvements is Menards because there are two very close to me. I used to always shop at Home Depot because it was closer to this house. So I wanted to go to Home Depot because they have irregular width blinds there. They're like every two inches or so, where at Menards they were bigger increments, maybe four inches or so. Really had a hard time with this. I didn't want to pay a large amount of money to get custom cut blinds. Menards would only do the custom cut blinds for the width that I needed on their faux wood blinds or the more expensive high end. I needed something cheap and you know if you've ever bought blinds before in a house they never last long they're plastic you know vinyl the ones on my front door i lose two or three tabs off them all the time because the kids bend the ends so let me show you what i picked up so this is their new cordless window blind and you know the lighting is terrible here and it's probably going to get a little better here as i open this up but look at this it just pushes off it's a little tricky no cords. I think that is so neat. And they were really pretty simple to put up. It's a different design for me because I've always done the corded blinds. So I can pull this right down to where I want. And for like on a door or here, this window's a little grassy because it's just kind of set in. It's not installed properly. You can add the little stay tabs. Now this actual blind width was 43 and a half inches. So I had between each side a quarter of an inch gap so for theft and security you can't see in through the sides they're exactly what i needed i had thought about going with like a couple of 19 or 20 inches um, in between because i've got about a two inch um, uh, style or rail here in the center that i was able to use for mounting also so let me show you how easy this goes up so it kind of worried me at first when I saw reviews online. It has a new style mounting bracket, and this is the same style mounting bracket that I had in my old aluminum blinds in my old house. So they were a higher end mounting bracket instead of the little plastic boxes that you normally see right up here. And you can do an inside mount on the window like this, or you can do it outside. So you can do it either way. Now with these windows, I really wanted to do an inside mount but I had some trouble here with this and I'll show you why. This house was built in the 50s and somebody just kind of haphazardly went around and hung the drywall. They went right up to the window casing and where I needed to anchor in here, it's drywall for this to be able to have the overhang that I wanted. So it's gotta sit on this top lip and then snap into the bottom bracket in a rotating manner. So you start on the top. And with the inside casing, I could not have access to that because of the drywall kind of interfering with the trim. So I'm mounting this into my new trim, which it didn't hurt me to be able to do that because I actually used first stripping instead of um, actual wood casing. So I had more of a thickness right here for doing that. So this is gonna mount right up here. I pre-drilled my holes. And I've done the same thing on this side. And the only thing I will tell you that I had trouble with on the first one is you have to make sure you clear the hardware right here um, as you're putting it up. So when you're putting it up, I know the lighting is hard with this. You have to look and make sure that you're going to miss that. So on my first one, I hadn't paid much attention to that. And I had to move mine over a little bit. And you don't want them so far to the ends that you don't have any support in the center. Um, 44 inches is getting wide, but they still only give you two brackets. So I don't want them too far on the ends, but you have to miss all this uh, rotating hardware in the center. So I'm going to go ahead 
And the first thing that they tell you to do is to put your end caps right here on the end. And then there is a bottom rail cap for the bottom. They tell you to put this in before you mount it. You could put it up before or after, really whatever suits you, because it does come down. It's just that you're gonna be pushing up on the whole system. So I'm gonna set the camera up here behind me so you can watch me install this. Now, if you don't have a drill to pre-drill your holes, um, it can be very hard getting these screws up into wood. And I don't recommend mounting them directly into drywall. If you are mounting them into drywall, please use anchors. Um, it's not likely that you're going to find a stud doing it that way. And then they're going to end up ripping out the first time you try to pull on them and open and close them. And a drill is nice to be able to put these up if you have a Phillips head screw attachment with an extension. Otherwise, the drill kind of is in the way. Um, the drill chuck would be in the way of the bottom of the mounting bracket, so that makes that very hard to do. Um, and I'm just setting this so that it's flush with the edge of my trim. And there's still plenty of bracket on the back part of the window casing in my case, as I'm mounting it, you know, close to the edge, so that when it's pulling down, it's putting some pressure up on the back side of it. And just snug those right up. So these are the little brackets that they give you to not make it sway um, on a door. In my case, most of the time, they end up coming down anyway since they slam the doors. They don't open and close them, do they? Now, in all, I think these were about $22 for each line. And I think that's pretty good for the security here. This home is in the city. The house next door is close enough that he can look out his windows and look in here and see if somebody's home. Or if you want to bring the garbage out to your garage in your underwear, you've got some privacy by putting these blinds up. And you know, for $22 and your time, uh, it's not worth hiring a handyman to come and do this. You need to be able to install blinds on your own if you're a homeowner. If you're a first time homeowner, congratulations on your home purchase. This is one of the first things I've always done when I bought a house, is put up lines and install curtains. Um, I'm really big on blinds and snaps with a shear, so you can have some privacy and still have daylight. These are a one inch room darkening blind made by Hampton Bay. Hampton Bay is Home Depot blind. And in general, I have not had much trouble with anything that's Hampton Bay. You could get these in a heavy duty version that I think might or might not have been handsome made, I don't remember. Um, they say they're certified best for kids because there's no strings. I will tell you that probably in my own home, some blinds are going to get switched to this because um, not having any pull strings. You should look up and do some searching for safety of kids with pull strings. We have a little boy who's almost two and he likes to pull on those strings if he can get a hold of them and it's really dangerous. Okay, so this is the end cap right here. It just slides right in, and you can't put it in wrong. There's a narrow side and a wide side. So that just snaps in. And you know, if you left it off, you're gonna scratch up your window casing. It's something that they could have easily done at the factory, but because these are also custom cup lines that you can have them sized to the width that you need, they just leave them off and let you do it yourself. One thing that I found I appreciate about the packaging of these is they had a little cardboard protector wrapping everything together. 
and a separate little box with the hardware instead of all wrapped in the little plastic bags that are so annoying. We have lots of rental houses, so I've put up a lot of blinds over the years. And just little things like that, I appreciate it. Okay, so this is basically ready. Um, we just need to... This, this is your dimming wand. So the nice thing about these, these are also room darkening. So if you want privacy, like for your bedroom, they're really nice to have. So these go really easy. You're going to tip them back with the top facing in and then they slide down. So that top bracket where the little J hook is, we're gonna set that right up there on that rail. See it's just sitting and I'm just gonna tip them in until they snap. Okay, and let me show you just how easy these are. just a little bit more and then they'll sit right there. Look at that. So that is some easy vinyl mini blind installation everybody. Thanks for watching. Now we've got some privacy in just the nosy neighbors in the neighborhood. I like it. I think it'll really help a lot. It's clean and crisp and I tell you it's totally worth it. Everybody thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time. Remember to hit that like button. Bye-bye. <laughs>